Hello and welcome to That's Unreal. Today we are going to take a look at an amazing game which was released back in 2014, called Middle Earth Shadow of Mortar. This game was an instant hit because the premise was in the legendary Lord of the Rings universe, and the game itself had an engaging storyline. So it was great from a story perspective, what about the actual gameplay and systems? Actually, Shadow of Mortar was a very interesting video game which introduced more advanced and creative game mechanics, and at that time, most people praised for its innovation. The main protagonist known as Talion, has the ability to call forth a powerful wraith, which gives immense wraith powers to him during battles. One of these powers is known as the Shadow Strike. Today we are going to break down the Shadow Strike ability, and implement the same mechanics using Unreal Engine. This ability is very satisfying to pull off, because it also gives the option, to chain together multiple shadow strikes against various enemies in different places. Which ultimately gives a feeling of great power, and it helps to kill as many enemies quickly. Now that we are familiar with the shadow strike ability, let's break it down. To enter the wraith mode, first, player needs to equip the bow. This will trigger the wraith mode effects. Let's see what these effects are. First one is the most obvious one, in which the whole area gets slightly darker, and there is a smoky wind effect to emphasize that our character is now in the wraith mode. Secondly, our character's mesh shaders are turned into a semi-transparent light bluish color, along with the bow he is holding. And finally, enemies which can be attacked are shaded in a glowing manner, using a post-process effect, so that players can clearly see where the enemies are located. Now that we have a somewhat understanding about how visual effects should be, let's focus on how the actual mechanic works. When in Wraith mode, the player's main weapon is the bow. This bow can be used to initiate the shadow strike by targeting an initial target. Once there is a valid target, the player needs to start the ability by pressing a button. Just when the input is received, the character teleports towards the target and performs the execution. By the end of the execution animation, there is room to select another nearby target to perform a chain shadow strike. If there is another target, a small UI indicator pops up, and the player can press the same button to start the next strike. In this way, player is able to kill multiple targets in a small amount of time. Now that we have gone through the basics of the ability, let's get into Unreal and start working. First thing that I did was get some execution animations and weapon models from Unreal Marketplace. Shadow of Mortar had some great looking animations, so I was looking for something similar. Thankfully I have found some great animation packs and imported them into the project along with the weapons. Then I replaced the default animations in third person template with new animations, and made two weapon blueprints for both the sword and the bow. My first objective is to make the bow aiming functions, so that it's possible to toggle wraith mode when aiming. I made an enumerator called ability state, and this variable will store the current state of the ability. There are four states that ability could be in at any given time, those are idle, aiming, teleporting and striking. So when player press and hold the right mouse button the state goes into aiming and update the properties of the character, and when released, it goes to idle state. I also update the animation blueprint of the character, based on the aiming state, and adjust the mesh spine bones to match the mouse input. And finally, I made a timeline to smoothly adjust the field of view of the camera with an offset to get a similar effect like in the original game. Next, I added two child actor components, and assigned each of them with sword and bow blueprints, and attached them into character hands. In the original game, the sword is replaced by the bow automatically when goes into aiming mode, and it resets back to sword when not aiming. So I made the sword as the default weapon. When aiming, I made the visibility of the sword to be hidden, while making the bow to be visible, just like in the original. Next step is to detect which target is under the crosshair, which is drawn into screen using UMG. For this, I use a simple line trace from the center of the screen to some reachable distance, tracing only happens when aiming, and if there is a valid target, I stored it in a variable. To indicate which enemy is currently targeted, I use a small UI element to pop on top of the targeted enemy, and it shows the button which needs to be pressed to start the shadow strike. 
Alright, let's now work on some visual effects that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. First I'm going to make the rave vision with smoky trails using a post-process material. After some research, I was able to make the effect using a time node and a dust texture to get the moving fog effect. And a scene depth node to adjust the various properties of the fog. And finally, adding a parameter to control the visibility of the post-process effect. Then after that, made in another post-process material to receive custom depth data and based on those values, made the player and other enemies highlighted during the Wraith mode. And finally, I made bluish transparent material to add to the player character to emphasize that character is in Wraith mode, and activate it when necessary. After putting those all together, this was the outcome. Let's move on to teleportation and continue with the rest of the shadow strike mechanic. At the start of the striking, I turn off the target indicator and then change ability state to teleport. In the original game, Talion makes a small jump while rotating towards the selected target. It's subtle, but it needs to be implemented as well. So what I did was edit out a jumping animation and play it as an animation montage, and smoothly rotates the character towards the target while the montage is still in progress. When the teleportation happens the camera sticks into the start location for a few seconds, and smoothly gets closer to the character just before the execution animation starts. There are multiple ways of achieving the same in Unreal, but the most easiest solution I came up with, that making the camera lag very high, so it stays at the location of the start of the teleportation. Just before teleporting to the target I use a function to derive which execution animation is the most appropriate one to play based on the direction of the target. I'll explain this a bit more in depth. This function uses another helper function called check for valid teleport location, to find a valid location and provides a direction based on that. In this project, the possible directions are front, back or none which are all player teleport directions relative to the target. To determine the direction, this uses two capsule traces at the infront and behind the target, if the capsule is blocked by some obstacle, which means player cannot be teleported to that location. It also do a line trace to check if there is a surface where player can stand, otherwise the player may fall down to ground when teleporting to that location, and playing the execution animation. If at least one of these directions suffice each of these conditions, it consider the direction the target is facing relative to the player, and return the most appropriate direction character needs to be teleported to. If I enable the debug lines and target an enemy, you can see how this validation actually works in the game. I have two sets of data structures, one is for front execution animations, and other one is for back. These structures hold the execution animation data. It contains the attacker animation, victim animation, and the base distance between attacker and victim, to sync the animation as intended. Using the predetermined direction, I choose one of these structures to get the animation data, which needs to be played at the end of teleportation. Next I use the move component 2 node, to teleport the character capsule component to the target location, and set the rotation to face the target. And finally, I played the saved animations for both player and target, and set the state as striking. Then using a timeline node, I increase the camera lag value which we set before, to the default value. This will move the camera slowly towards the character just before the animation begins to play. Now the teleportation effect looks like this. It seems like we are getting there. Noise. Now let's start working on how to chain multiple shadow strikes in a row, just like in Shadow of Mortar. After the initial shadow strike, the player needs to wait for some time until the animation reaches a certain point. Most likely this point is where the target is just killed. Once it reaches, the player can look around using the mouse input, and time slows down a little bit, so it gives the player more freedom to look around. When this happens, the game automatically searches for the most appropriate target which can be killed using Shadow Strike, and indicates the selected target using an UI element. Once this target indicator appears, the player can press the Shadow Strike button again to teleport to the newly selected target, and perform the execution just like before. To implement this functionality in Unreal, 
I use a custom animation notify state on each of execution animations. This notify state handles the global time dilation adjustments, as well as the detection of the next target for the duration of the state. To find the next target, all I did was, adding a multi-sphere line trace by object type for the duration of the notify state, and save all traced actors in an array of actors. By using the saved array, I did a line trace to each of them to check the line of sight between the player and the actor, to see if that an actor is currently blocked by some obstacle. If the actor has a clear direct path to the player, then I perform an angle check to see if that the actor is in player view range relative to the camera. If both of these conditions are valid, then I finally check for the distance between each actor to see which one is the closest to the player, and finally pick that actor, and assign it as the next target of the shadow strike, and show the target indicator above. Once that is done and the player presses the shadow strike input, I simply clear out the arrays containing the actors, and update the ability state, and call the initial shadow strike function again, so the rest is done as before. Now that the main mechanics are done, let's add some more visual effects and polish up the level, so that we can demonstrate our shadow strike ability. I have gone through all the mechanics of the Shadow Strike ability in this video, but if you are interested in taking a closer look at the project, you can download it from GitHub. Also included all the resources that I have used in this video. All of them are in the description below. If you are interested please take a look. Don't forget to comment down below, what game mechanic breakdown do you want to see next? And finally, if you learned something new or enjoyed this video then like and subscribe for more of this type of content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.